So in this video, I'm going to put the garden to sleep. It's time. Everything's overgrown. They're, all my perennials are between two and three feet. And they need to be cut back to about six inches. Put a lot of mulch. Put a lot of wood chips. So that they can survive the snow in the winter when it comes. So come on. There's a lot of dead seeds I could still get, but I collected quite a bit. And some real pretty live ones, but it's time. It's time. It's just way too much. So I'm going to cut a lot of these. You know, it, it starts to get really cold at night. Comfrey will get cut, dropped right there beautiful purple flowers I have to cut it all the way back for winter and it'll come back next year see how beautiful it is it was a purple bloom this is gonna get cut back pretty low it's gonna die anyway maybe to about here and then filled with a lot of mulch the seniors will be pulled the flowers will be saved just for a little while so I can enjoy them for a little bit longer the dead heads will be saved, although I have so many. And a lot of them will come back next year as volunteers. They always do. That's how I got all these. Look at the pineapple sage. That's a beauty. As soon as the flowers fall and die, I'll cut it back pretty low. And every single, you know, just keep cutting, 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 and all will fall down. That'll be part of the chop and drop. Here's another sage. It smells delicious. Mm. Oh, I love how it smells. But I cut it back every year to about maybe six inches and it grows. This year it grew pretty, grew to almost three feet tall. And I used it quite a bit to make teas and use it in many dishes. This is another flower, which was only a tiny little one. It could be clearly pulled out, separated. That could be one, two, three, four, five, six plants instead of that one. I can just bring them out here, five, six plants, and make this into a nice big bush along with this one. This could also be pulled out. See, pulled out. I'm gonna chop it anyway all the way down, but I could dig it up and then just spread it out here. Make it, you know, thicker. This is a black eyed Susan right here. Black eyed Susan. Can do that so the black eyed Susan spreads all around here, or I could take them and spread them all over. It's gotten big. It used to be a tiny little plant, not that big. But now that it's like this, it's just gonna spread. Again, this is my pineapple. Mmm, pineapple sage. It smells so good. As soon as these flowers die and fall off, I'll chop it all the way down to about maybe six inches. This flower, this was a baby flower, tiny, maybe one foot. And it has grown and grown and grown and spread all over. I just can't believe it. Sometimes I wonder, should I leave it like this or cut it back? And these daisies keep on giving. Just keep on and keep on, even though they look that they should be dead. They just keep on. I have to cut it back. I'm dying here. Look at all those flowers. Do I cut it back today? Or do I wait a week or so? But they need to be cut back. We 
least they'll have a little bit of flowers left that we can enjoy for a little while. That's just the ones that we're pulling out, not the ones that are falling here, that next year will be volunteers for well, this garden right here. Look at that lantana. It's out of control. Wow. I, pull, I always cut that lantana back to about a foot. And the snows come and, 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 you know, we don't get a lot of snow, but the snow kills it even all the way down. I cut it for, to about a foot and then the snow will kill it all the way down to the ground. Every year I think it's completely dead. Every year it comes out, comes out this big. Yeah. I got purple lantana, this color lantana, pink lantana. So if you want lantana, remember that it spreads. I left a lot of the calendula on there because it's still growing. Look at all those flowers. Wow. Some comfrey that I just put in here, but <clears throat> I'm going to fill this whole thing with topsoil because, believe it or not, it was pretty high. And look, it's exposing the rotted wood. So <clears throat> I'm leaving the flowers. And on this side, a lot of herbs. I have, um, I can't even remember the name. Um, some really good smelling herbs here. And some peppers still left, but uh, the wood is exposed again once I pull the, toma the tomato plants. So I have to come back with lots of leaves. There's plenty of those right now. All the leaves are falling. And there's some grass, you know, I still have the whole field over there is still green. So I'm going to get some grass clippings. Put a lot of grass clippings. So that'll be my green, my brown, and then topsoil on top of this. Top it off for about six inches, the whole thing. Leaving these plants there so they can come back next year. So cleaning the hugo culture mound. A lot of work. But has to be done. More pineapple sage. This was the mother plant. I took a baby plant out of this one and planted it back there where I showed you the other pineapple seeds. Look at it. It just keeps going and going and going and going. Honey, don't worry about it anymore. I think we have plenty. Yeah? Yeah. Not only do we have that, but we have plenty of uh, seeds. I need to film this in more than one part. This will be part one. Part two and maybe three will come up later. Hey! Here I am again, sitting on my beautiful swing that I got from Paula and Alicia of Just Living. And I'm telling you, whoa, what a swing. What a delicious way to end a video or end your day in the garden. Oh my goodness, I love it. Thank you. And as always, hit the bell, like, share, and subscribe.